In this video, we're going to fill in our final box in our operations on rational expressions notes, and it will be adding and subtracting with unlike denominators. So go ahead and get those notes out because we are going to fill them in. I'll type in our bullet points, and then we will go through some examples on a separate page after. Our first note is that we always want to factor our expressions, our rational expressions, before we work with them. So factor first, and we do that to see what we have in our rational expression. So what I mean by that is what factors do we have? I'll even add that. See what factors we have in our rational expression. That way, it might make it a little bit easier to combine into one rational. So after we factor, we need to form a common denominator through multiplication. What that means is take the denominators or pieces of the denominators and make one common denominator. For instance, if you needed to add one third and one half, the common denominator for those two would be one sixth. And you multiply the two and the three, the denominators together to make that common denominator. From there, you also need to adjust the numerator. So if you're gonna change the denominator, you also have to adjust the numerator. You can't just change the bottom and hope that the tops will work out. You have to change the top as well. After you've done those three things, go back to your add addition and subtraction rules. After then, after those things, then you can add and subtract. To practice this, we have two worksheets, worksheet seven and worksheet eight. Both deal with this concept, so we're going to work through the odd problems on these two worksheets. So looking at number one on worksheet seven, we have one over x plus one over y. So unlike when we have common denominators, we can't just add these together. X and Y don't match, so they're not ready to go. So first, what we need to do is we need to form a common denominator by multiplying the bottoms together. So X and Y are not similar, so all we have to do is take X and Y and make a common denominator. But in order to get X and Y in both fractions bottoms, we had to multiply each fraction by something. So if the first fraction, I took X and multiplied it with Y to make that bottom. Therefore, I also needed to multiply the top by Y. So one times Y, that's just Y. So the top is no longer one, it's now Y. The right fraction was one over Y, and I had to multiply X with the Y to make xy. In order to actually do that, I have to do that on the top as well. So 1 times x, that's x on top, and we get x over xy. You'll notice if I turn this x over x into a fraction and the y over y into a fraction, think about it. What am I multiplying by? I'm just multiplying by a version of 1. x over x is just 1. So we're not actually changing anything. That's why we're allowed to do this. Now that we have common denominators, it's just a normal adding or subtracting fractions problem. So x, y is our denominator. It will not change. The numerator, we just add straight across, y plus x. And there's our final answer. Looking down at number three, we have 2x over 3 plus 5y over 2. We do not have a common denominator. So let's multiply our bottoms together and get a common denominator. 3 times 2 is really just 6, but that'll be our denominator. And then 3 times 2 in the other fraction. Since we multiplied what was missing here on this one, we were missing 2. So I have to do that to the top as well. So the top of the left fraction now becomes 2 times 2x, which is 4x. And then on the right side, we multiplied by 3. 
So the top on the right is 5y times 3. That's 15y. So like we said before, 3 times 2, that's just 6. So our new denominator will be 6. Since 3 times 2 is the same in both fractions, we're good to go. We can add the tops. The top becomes 4x plus 15y. We got common denominators, and then we just added the top like normal. On to number 5. Number 5, we have 2x over x squared y minus y over xy squared. This one gets a little bit more complicated. First, we need to think about what we have in our denominator. So I'm going to list underneath my fraction what's in my denominator. I have an x, an x, and a y. On the right side, I have an x, a y, and a y. So the left side has two x's and one y, and the right side has one x and two y's. So if I'm going to give the left side something that the right side has, but the left side's missing, it would be a y. If I'm going to do the same to the right side, give it what it's missing, it's going to be an x. So we give the right side an x, the left side a y. So all we did, instead of multiplying by a number, we multiplied by y over y on the left and x over x on the right. This is actually just like the first problem. It just took a little bit more to figure out what was actually missing from our denominator. The best way to write this denominator is going to be x squared, like you saw it originally, y squared, like you saw it originally. The top will become y times 2x is 2 x, y. Don't forget that's minus. And then the top on the right side will be x, y. And the bottom is x squared, y squared. So we have 2x, y minus x, y, both of them over x squared, y squared. So we just have to subtract 2x, y minus x, y. That's just x, y. x squared over y squared is still our denominator. But unfortunately, because this is Algebra 2, we got to pause and think. Can we simplify this anymore? Using our exponent rules, we actually can. So I'm going to move up to do so. x over x squared, that just becomes 1 over x. And then y over y squared, once again, is 1. I'll put a dot to make sure we multiply that. Over y. So my final answer is just a race here, 1 over xy. We can simplify, and therefore we end up with just 1 on the top and xy on the bottom because the x and the y squared, both of them squared in the bottom, will simplify down and make this a nice simplified rational expression. All right, looking at number seven, we have a over b minus c over d. Well, everything's different, so let's just multiply and make common denominators here. Our common denominator is going to be b times d. That means to get that, I had to multiply the top and the bottom by d on the left side. And then on the right side, I had to multiply to make bd by b over b. So the left top, the left numerator will be a, d, and the right numerator will be b, c. Now it's just subtraction, a, d minus b, c, all over b, d. Nothing to simplify here. Our final answer is a, d minus b, c over b, d. This to me shows the uh, properties of this really, really well. On the back of worksheet seven, you can see number nine and number 11. Number nine looks at 4x minus 1 over 3x plus x minus 8 over 5x. So 
you might think, oh, I just multiply by 5x on the left and 3x on the right, but pause for a second. The left fraction already has an x. The right fraction already has an x. So you don't need to multiply by another x. That'd be too many x's. So all we actually have to multiply by is 5. So we already have the x. So all you need to multiply by is 5. So you multiply by 5 on the left side. And that means all we have to multiply by on the right side is that 3. Therefore, our common denominator is going to become 15x. I'm just going to go ahead and write that now under one big fraction. So the top left, I'm going to distribute that 5 into the 4x minus 1. So 5 multiplies the 4x and the minus 1, so it becomes 20x minus 5. And then the 3 will do the same on the right numerator. It becomes 3x minus, oh, not 8, 24. So now we just combine the top. 20x plus 3x is 23x. Negative 5 minus 24 is minus 29. There's number 9. Number 11, we have a plus 2b over 3 plus ab over 2. So my common denominator here is going to be 6. We're multiplying by 2 on the left side to make that 6 because the 3 needs to turn into a 6. And then on the right side, we're multiplying by 3 because that 2 needs to turn into a 6. So both denominators will become 6. The top, let's distribute again. So we have 2 times a plus 2b, so we have 2a plus 4b. And then on the right side, we're going to distribute this 3. It becomes 3a plus 3b. Now we just combine like terms and keep our denominator the same. 2a plus 3a is 5a. 4b plus 3b is 7b. Awesome. So worksheet seven, not too bad. All we did was make common denominators and then combine our two rational expressions into one. Look now at worksheet eight. Worksheet eight, you will see, gets a little bit more involved. So it includes factoring and simplifying and a little bit more than we did on the other one. So starting with number one here, we have r over 5 plus 3r over 10. Not actually so bad of a start. Our common denominator here would be 10. Well, the right fraction already has a common denominator of 10, so I don't need to multiply by anything. But the left side only has a 5, so I have to multiply by 2. So it becomes 2r over 10 to get that common denominator. Then we have... 2r plus 3r makes 5r. That's still over 10. And pause for a second and think. 5 tenths, and that's just 1 half. So your final answer is r over 2. So make sure you're always simplifying down to the end. Number 3, we have 8 over y minus 6 over y squared. So this is similar to the last one. The last one we already had 10 on the right side. This time we already have a y on the right side. We actually have two of them. So the left fraction does not have the y or one of the y's. So we have to multiply by an additional y. Our common denominator is going to be y squared. So the fraction on the right doesn't change. The fraction on the left will change into 8y. Now we just combine and we get 8y minus 6 over y squared. So, so far, not so bad on this sheet. Looking now up at number five, we have seven over xy minus negative nine over yz. So the left fraction has an xy in the bottom and the right fraction has a yz in the bottom. So both have y, we don't need to multiply by y. But the left fraction is missing that z, so I'm gonna multiply by z on the top and the bottom to get a common denominator of x, y, z. And then on the right side, we need to multiply by x 
because it's missing the x that the left side has. And that will give us our common denominator of x, y, z. We're basically just accounting for all the pieces. Everything that shows up in the denominator needs to be accounted for. So my left numerator becomes 7z. My right numerator becomes negative 9x. But here's what I'm going to do. Instead of subtracting negative 9, what's minus a negative? Plus. So change both those negatives into pluses, and now we're good to go. We have 7z plus 9z over xyz. This one's not so hard, but it's on the harder sheet because people tend to get lost when there are three variables or more. Don't get lost in that. It's pretty straightforward here. It's the same stuff as the last sheet. It just has an extra variable, so be careful with that. On to number seven, we have x plus two over y plus three over x. The denominators don't match at all, so let's just multiply them together. My denominator, common denominator is going to become x, y. So in order to make x, y on the left, we have to multiply by x. In order to make x, y on the right, we have to multiply by y. So I'm going to start with the right numerator. 3 times y will make 3y. The denominator is xy, like we said. On the left side, we're going to distribute that x. So x times x is x squared. And then x times 2 is 2x. So the left numerator is x squared plus 2x, and the denominator is also xy. Now that we have common denominators, we can combine across the common denominator, and we get x squared plus 2x plus 3y. So be careful here. You can't combine any like terms. x squared is different from x, and x is obviously different from y. So that's your final answer right there. On to number 9 on the back side. I can find it. There it is. This is where things get complicated, like I mentioned before. So we have 2a minus 6 over a squared minus 9 minus 1 over a plus 3. So if you were trying to make a common denominator, you might think, okay, the right side's missing an a, so I might need to multiply by an a. And then we have a negative 9 and a 3, so maybe I'll multiply by negative 3a. But let's multiply that out real quick. If we multiply a plus 3 by negative 3a, we're going to get negative 3a squared minus 9a. Does that match a squared minus 9? No, those two are not equal to each other. So we're not going to want to use negative 3a, but you're on the right track if you're thinking we need an a and a negative 3. Let's keep the a. Let's put minus 3. Now let's multiply this out. a plus 3 times a minus 3 gives me a squared minus 3a plus 3a minus 9. What happens in the middle there? All we're left with is a squared minus 9. That looks to be what we want as a common denominator because these two match. Let me show you the better way of doing this. You don't have to guess and check. Cool. Take this denominator and factor it. It's a difference of squares. I'm going to factor the top real quick. The difference of squares will always factor as a minus 3, a plus 3. Now you can see we have a really nice a plus 3 that already exists. So really, that's how you could figure out you need to multiply by that a minus 3 that we discovered before. This a minus 3 comes from right here. But another alarm bell should be going off in your head right now. 
this isn't actually a um, difficult problem. This is a simplifying problem first. A minus 3 matches on the top and the bottom of the first fraction once you factor out that GCF. So if we rewrite 2 over A plus 3 as our new fraction, and 1 minus 1 over A plus 3, we already have common denominators, A plus 3. We just had to cancel that A minus 3. So always make sure you're thinking through all the steps. Simplify first, factor first, and then go through your addition and subtraction. So in this case, we have 2 over A plus 3 minus 1 over A plus 3, 2 minus 1, that's just 1. Don't forget your denominator, A plus 3. On to number 11, we have 3 over 2h squared minus 2h plus 5 over 2h minus 2. This is another factor problem. So I'm going to factor the bottom of the left side. 2h squared and 2h have a 2h in common. So we're going to factor out that 2h, and we get 2h on the outside times h minus 1. And then on the right side, we factor the bottom, and 2h and 2 have just a 2 in common. So we have h minus 1 inside the parentheses as well. So if you think, the one thing that the denominators don't have in common is this h on the outside. So that's the one thing I have to multiply the second fraction by. So h over h is all I'm missing on the right side. Don't change the left side. We have 3 over 2h times h minus 1 plus 5 times h is 5h. And then our denominators are now going to match, so it should both be 2h times h minus 1. From there, we will get to our final answer, the final answer being 3 plus 5h. And I'm going to... Just rewrite it as the original denominator. So remember, this denominator that we've been using came from 2h squared minus 2h. So I'm going to write it as 2h squared minus 2h. That is our final answer for number 11. So factoring helped us realize that we only were missing an h. You might have been able to notice that, but factoring helps us realize that. Looking at number 13, the last one that we have on this, we have 6 over x squared minus 4x plus 5 plus 1 over x plus 1. So immediately you should be thinking, we have an x puzzle to solve. What multiplies to 5 and adds to negative 4, negative 5, and 1? So this left fraction is going to be 6 over x minus 5 times x plus 1. Well, now you can see... The right fraction is just missing an x minus 5. So our common denominator will be x minus 5 times x plus 1. In order to get that, we have to multiply the right side by x minus 5. So 6 doesn't change on the left side. 1 times x minus 5 is just x minus 5. And now we combine and we get 6 plus x minus 5, 6 minus 5, 1. So we have 1 plus x over x minus 5 times x plus 1. Now you're probably thinking you're going to be sticky, but you're not actually that sticky. 1 plus x is the same thing as x plus 1. Boom. Cancel it out. Always cancel out your rational expressions when you can. So your final answer here is 1, top 1 away, over x minus 5. So we factored this one using two-step trinomial factoring, got a common denominator, and then once we did that, we were able to add the numerators together like normal. But that wasn't the end. We still had to cancel 
once we canceled, we got to our final answer of 1 over x minus 5. So yes, this one was by far the most complicated, but as you can see, doable if you follow all of your steps.